was falling the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just give you thanks here this evening, Father. We bless the name that's above every other name, the most wonderful name of Jesus. The name that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess to. You are the Christ, the chosen one, the risen Savior, Abba Father, Deliverer, Savior, Master. We bless you here tonight, O oh God. We give you thanks that we're able to still communicate your gospel, Lord God. There is no bounds, Father, for your word. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that your spirit fall. Let your spirit be sent forth to those that are watching here this evening, Father. Whether they're downtrodden, Lord God, sick, worried, Lord God, anxious, I pray in the name of Jesus for the comfort of the Holy Ghost to fall upon them. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding rest upon them here this evening, O God. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. You go ahead and have your seats. Here this evening, if you're in your living room, you're worshiping with us. Welcome this evening to Breakthrough Community Church. Thank you so much for tuning in here tonight. We, we, we thank God that you trust us here enough to watch the services here. And we just want to tell you that God loves you. He is mindful of you. The Bible tells us who is man that you are mindful of him and that you test him on a daily basis, which means he's thinking about you constantly. Amen. You and I, he's always has us on his mind. Amen. The announcement for tonight really is we're going to have, uh, not tomorrow, but the following Thursday, and we still have to get a time together, but we're going to be handing out food here at the church. We're joining together with two other churches, and we're going to be doing a line outside, and I'll have more details ahead of time. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, you can let me know. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be in the middle of the day or at the end of the day yet, so as soon as I find out, uh, the details, I'll make sure to post it and let everybody know if you want to get involved in that. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, this evening we have our evening tithes and offerings. And this is a very familiar portion of Scripture here. I'm going to read a little bit beyond what most people read when they, when they read this portion of Scripture here found in Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. The Word of God reads, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Even this whole nation, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing, there will be not enough room to contain it. Now, in verse 11, this part here I want to, emphasize this portion of scripture here and found in verse 11. It says here, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Amen. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. God has got you covered. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pray for this evening's offering. I want to remind you that you can still tithe. We have there's an app that we use, and it's called tithe t i t h e dot l y, and you can just search for us at Breakthrough Community Church on there. You can also mail it here to the church as well. Our address here is eight one one zero West Peoria, Suite Number One Ten, Peoria, Arizona eight five three four five. Also, a couple of prayer requests, if you would. Uh, tomorrow, if we play, pray for the Fernandez family, for Lisa, um, you know, we just keep her in our prayers and our thoughts um, tomorrow, and also for Monica Cardenas, you know, as well. You know, we want to pray that God would just, just touch both of them right now in the name of Jesus. We'll send your spirit, Lord, 
We pray over them right now. And we're going to go ahead and just uh, lift up this evening's offering. Father, we come before you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, giving you all glory, all thanks, and all praise, Father. We lift up our sisters, Father God, that are in need to you here this evening. First and foremost, Lord God. Uh, Father, I pray, Lord God, a divine healing, Lord God, that you would come in, Father, and do what you do best, and that's heal, Father. So I pray whatever means you use, Father, whether it be divine or whether it be at the hand of a doctor, Lord God, the hand of medicine, Father God, that you would be in the mix, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus against anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God over those two women, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray here tonight, Father, that you would bless the giver tonight, Lord God. Continue to bless them, Father God, richly, Lord. I pray for those that are unable to give as well this evening, Father. That you have blessed them financially, richly, Father God, that they may see one day the joys of giving, Father. We thank you ahead of time. We bless you ahead of time, Father. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen and amen. You can uh, go ahead and if you're at home right now and you're standing or you're sitting, give that person sitting next to you a big high five or a virtual hug. We're giving you virtual hugs right now. Amen. Virtual high fives. There you go. Amen. And we have this evening's speaker tonight. We're going to be calling up Robert Vasquez, and his wife's going to be singing a song here this evening. Rob, if you want to go ahead and come on up and bless us with word and in song tonight. Amen. Good evening, Facebook Live. We're just uh, glad that you could join with us here tonight. Um, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be in God's house. And uh, I just hope that tonight's message would just touch your heart. You know, there's a lot going on in the world today and uh, uh, there's hope. Uh, God is the answer and God is our only hope. But before I speak, uh, my wife is going to bless us with the song. So uh, just listen to the words of these songs and I hope they encourage you and touch you. Good evening, everyone. Just really um, very happy to be here tonight and uh, missing everybody's smiling faces. Uh, but I can still feel the presence of the Lord tonight, so I'm really thankful and happy about that. Uh, the song tonight that I'm going to sing is called Rescue Story. And of course, it's a difficult song. I don't know why I picked it to sing, but I pray that it blesses you. Um, and I, I know the Lord would um, prepare for a song, prepare me for a song like this unless he's going to equip me for it. So I pray that it uh, blesses you and uh, to God be all glory. And um, hit it. <laughs> Jesus, you were the voice in the 
disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said uh, to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Pray with me tonight. Father, I just come before you in the precious name of Jesus, God. Father, I pray that you prepare every heart tonight, Lord God. Let every ear be open, Father. Let every heart, Lord God, be softened, Lord God, to receive the word that you have tonight, Father. Father, I pray, Lord God, that your word will go forth, Lord. And I know, Father, that it will not return back void, God, but it would do what it was set out to do, God. Father, we need you in this time, God. We need a touch from you, Father. We need hope, Lord God. We need you tonight, Jesus. So, Father, we ask that you would have your way. Be high lifted up in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's been uh, very strange and challenging, just like tonight. It's kind of weird uh, going live on Facebook. Uh, but these last few months, to say the least, life as we know it has changed drastically with everything that has taken place in the world around us. We have been faced with a crisis that has brought fear and doubt into the lives of many, to believers and to non-believers alike. Over 2,000 years ago, the followers of Jesus were faced with a crisis that brought uncertainty, fear, and doubt. The man they knew as the son of God who did many miracles, who cast out demons and healed the sick, was beaten, nailed to a tree, murdered, and laid in a tomb. On that day, many lost hope. Many were fearful, some doubted, 
Even though he said he would rise again in three days. You know, this past Sunday we just celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior because we believe that he is alive and well. And that he holds this world with his right righteous hand. But here we are three days later with the crisis still before us. Do we find ourselves in a place of doubt like Thomas did? You see, Thomas was one of the disciples. He walked with Jesus. Thomas got to experience miracles firsthand. He experienced the impossible, things that only the Son of God can make possible with evidence and proof. You see, Thomas walked with Jesus. He got to experience many things with physical eyes. And yet he finds himself in this place, just like many tonight. Here in John 20, 20, uh, 4 through 25, the, this portion of scripture takes place after the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. The Bible does not mention Thomas's whereabouts when Jesus first appeared. We know that he was not with the disciples at that time. You see, crisis will either cause us to do one or two things. It will either cause us to draw closer to the Lord or away from the Lord. And if you're drawn away from the Lord tonight, God is your only hope. God is the only answer to whatever's going on in this world today. Now is not the time to draw away from the Lord, but to draw closer and to draw nearer. I believe in this, in Thomas's case, his was one of grief and mourning. He just lost uh, the man that he loved, the man that he uh, spent time with. Everything that he knew was stripped. Life as he knew it would never be the same. So he thought. You can never count God out. Even when things look bleak, even when things seem hopeless, you can never count God out. Because he always shows up, and he always does what he says he's going to do. So it is today, life as we know it will never be the same. Many have and will lose their lives due to this virus. Many people have lost their jobs. Many businesses will never recover. Many people are hopeless and full of doubt. If you're watching tonight, all I can say is Jesus. You see, he has a track record that supersedes everyone and everything else. He's the greatest phenomenon. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. His name is Jesus. Do you know him tonight? If you don't know him tonight, at the end of this service, you will have an opportunity to know him. You will have an opportunity to doubt no more. You will have an opportunity to experience peace that surpasses all understanding. Verse 25. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. You see, Thomas gets a bad rap for wanting to see proof that Jesus was alive. I'm just like Thomas. I want proof. I won't believe it unless I see it. It's not a bad thing. I'm not going to take your word or the words of others. I want to see it for myself before I believe. Unfortunately, it's hard to trust the words of others today. I don't want my experience with Jesus to be based on the word of others. I don't want my experience with Jesus to be based on the word of others. But based on personal experience and every word that proceeds from the Lord's mouth. You see, that's why it's important to know the word of God. And when someone speaks from behind this pulpit, that it lines up with the Word of God. 
It's very important to know God's word, to what he says, what's truth. I don't want to just hear it from somebody else. I want to see it for myself. You see, in order to believe that Jesus is real, we must see it for ourselves. We must see it for ourselves. Verse 26 through 27. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. You see, God doesn't have to prove anything to us. He doesn't owe us an answer, and he's not obligated to give an answer. But because he's a loving God, because he's a living God, and because he's a God, because he's a, a, we serve a God who is intimately acquainted with our struggles, he will give proof that he is real, that he is alive. You see, Jesus knows our struggles. He knows what we go through because he himself has went through some things that he can understand what we're going through even tonight with doubt, with fear, with uncertainty, even with those that Pastor mentioned, Lisa and Monica, God knows your struggles and God will answer and God will prove himself real to you. You see, Jesus responds with undeserved grace and mercy. He tells Thomas, put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Jesus didn't have to do that. But he did. Because he loves us. And he wants us to know without a shadow of a doubt that he's real, that he's alive, and that he's, he's, he's well. That he sits at the right hand of the Father. You see, Jesus met, uh, will meet us in our time of doubt and need just like he did for Thomas. What is your struggle tonight? Is it doubt? Is it fear? What is it? Jesus is willing to meet you in your time of need. You see, I have no doubt that Jesus is alive and well. I've tasted of the Lord and know that he is good. I've touched the nail marks in his hands, maybe not physically, but it was proof enough when he saved a wretch like me. It was proof. I felt the nail marks when he saved me when I couldn't even save myself. It was because of the piercing in his side that I was delivered from drug addiction, hate, anger, bitterness, and that I could stand here tonight with a sound mind. I have no doubt tonight that Jesus is alive and well and that he is risen. It was because someone, it wasn't because someone told me. It's because of personal experience that I had and continue to have with Jesus. That I know that he's real. If you are full of doubt tonight, you need a personal encounter with Jesus. That's the only thing that's going to remove all fear and doubt, is a personal encounter with Jesus. Reach and touch the nail marks in his hand. Reach and touch his side. If he did it to, for Thomas, if he did it for me, he will surely do it for you. I'm no better than you are. If God can save someone like me, then he can save someone like you and remove the fear and doubt that you may be facing tonight. Stop doubting and believe. You see, God saved you when you couldn't save yourself. 
He restored your marriage when all hope was lost. He healed you when the doctor said there is no cure. He has delivered your sons and your daughters. He has made you the head and not the tail. He has made you joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are no longer the same. If God has done something for you today, then he has proven enough that he is alive and that he is well. Stop doubting and believe. Do not let this virus get you riled up and all fearful and doubtful. God is bigger than the virus. He is over the virus. Verse 28 and 29. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. I have never seen the Lord with my physical eyes. And I don't need to, to believe that he's real. You see, I see him every time he answers my prayers. I see him every day when the sun sets and uh, sunsets and rises. I see him every time I look in the mirror and realize I am not who I used to be. I am not the same. I remember a time when people would say he would either be dead or in prison. But because of God's grace and his power that I stand before you here tonight. Hebrews 11 one say, says it this way. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. You see, faith doesn't need tangible proof. I don't need tangible proof. I don't need to touch Jesus with my physical hands. He's touched me enough by changing my life. He's touched you enough by changing your life. He's touched you enough by saving someone that you've asked for. He's touched you enough when you asked him to heal you and you were healed. You don't need tangible proof tonight. Faith keeps looking until it sees what it was told. If God told you something, keep looking. One day you will see it. It will come to pass. Keep looking. Don't give up. You see, doubt sees the obstacles. Faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night. Faith sees the day. Doubt dreads take a step. Faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes. Faith answers I. I believe. I believe. Stop doubting tonight. The Bible says that blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You see, Thomas he got to walk with Jesus. Thomas got to experience firsthand miracles with Jesus physically. But the Bible says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's faith. To believe something that you cannot see physically. But you know that it's real because of the things that he's done for you. The things that he's done for your loved ones, your family, your friends. And if you go ahead and come up tonight. This isn't a blown out, drawn out message. And I don't know that I intended it to be. Stop doubting tonight. Wherever you're at tonight, if you don't know the Lord tonight, and you heard what I've said, there's thousands upon thousands that can give you proof that Jesus lives. Some that were faced with life sentences, some that were faced with incurable diseases. But Jesus. I'm going to say two prayers tonight. The first one is going to be for those who don't know Jesus. 
If you're watching tonight and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then I ask you to pray this prayer with me. Just right where you're at, just repeat after me. Say, Father, I believe that you died on the cross and you rose on the third day. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, to come into my life, to be Lord, to be Savior. Forgive me for the past and the present things that I've done to offend you. I receive you into my heart as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer tonight, touch him. Touch the nails. Touch his side. And what I mean by that is get a hold of God. Press in. God knows where you're at tonight. If it's doubt that you're battling, doubt no more. Only believe. If you're saved and you're watching and you've been struggling with different things because of things that are going on in the world today with this virus, Maybe you've lost a job. Maybe uh, things just aren't going right at home. Be reminded of the day that God saved you. When you cried out to him. And he took you just as you were. He cleaned you up. He saved you. Delivered you from drug addiction. Removed anger from your life. Things that you could not do on your own. But one day you called out to him. And he saved you. Be reminded of what God has done to you for, for you tonight. God has given proof. By the miracles that have taken place in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, God. I just pray, Lord God, for those, Lord God, who are weary, who are doubtful tonight, God. That tonight, God, that they would be reminded, Father, of your grace, of your love, of your mercy, God. Father, that they would be reminded, Lord God, the day they called out to you and you saved them, Father. Father, you are the same yesterday and today, God. You never change, Father. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world around us. You never change. You are still God. Father, I pray tonight for your people, Lord God, that they would doubt no more. The Father, tonight that you would give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. Father, tonight I just pray, Lord God, that you would just seal this word tonight, Father. I pray that those who have watched and heard God would receive your message tonight, God. Father, we just worship you tonight, Lord God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you tonight.